What's up guys? Welcome back to Oregon Fishing Adventures. Today we are out here doing something a little bit different. Doing something I've actually never done before and I'm super excited. Uh, first of all, we are meeting up with Rob from RMB Lure Co. If you guys don't know about him, you definitely should. Uh, he's been uh, making spinners for a long time. He's the main person I get all my steelhead and salmon spinners from. Um, he's also the one who made me my custom steelhead spinners, which has been putting in work. And uh, we're getting out here with him today, get to meet him for the first time. And he offered to take me out fishing for some walleye. And I've personally never caught walleye. I've heard they're delicious. Um, so we're gonna try to make that happen today. And there's also some smallmouth bass out here. So I brought my custom uh, smallmouth bass fishing rod with me. Uh, and we'll just see what we can do. So it should be a pretty great time out there. And we'll see you guys out on the water. All right. So we're gonna be running these guys. Well, are these like a medium diver? It's a number five flicker minnow. Okay, flicker minnow, gotcha. Runs, it's Berkeley makes them. They run to about 12, 13, 14 feet, depending on how much line we let out. Okay, cool. I'm not real scientific on it. I kind of cast it. And do you run scents or anything for I these? Do. I do. Okay. I actually use a, the, an aerosol can of, of scent, uh, Bang. Oh, okay, yeah. I've got one scent that seems to do really well. Cool. Okay. So, let's see. So if you want to pass that on up. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why, I've tried about everything that I can get my hands on from them, but the craw shad, for some reason, gets better. Craw bit. shad? Yeah, something That's the about scent, that huh? scent for these things, they like it. So you want to hang it over here? Cool. Both of them off the same side? Yeah, because there's a weed edge. Oh, this drag's really tight, huh? Oh. So did you just cast them out? So what we're going to do here... We're gonna back of the boat will go out first, so we don't angle them up. I'll kind of make a long cast. I'll okay. leave my bail open, and then I'll kind of give it about three open swings. Okay. About as scientific as I've gotten on this. And, and then, course, we'll am I casting out swings. that way? You'll cast out that way, so that way when we when we pull tight, they'll kind of pull together and they'll be separated. Okay, gotcha. And then, should I cast now? Go ahead. Okay. keep the rod in my hand and then what I do is since we're going upstream I kind of pull on it and kind of impart a little extra action yeah and when they decide something decides to grab it you will know yeah okay cool all right so I did like three extra rod lengths perfect so as we're trolling along here just kind of sweep it about six inches or so every couple of seconds the water is definitely up it's up about three feet higher than it normally is when we're out here do you find that that usually helps or hinders I don't fishing? know yet you don't know yet okay no I've been here I guess we're gonna find out today <laughs> yeah it's been about the exact same every time I've been here except last time was lower and uh, that was the time we did not land a walleye but we did hook them Here there'll be squawfish, walleye, and smallmouth. Okay, cool. So they all are pretty easy to tell the difference. Yeah. About half the walleye in this lake fight, which is new to me, because the ones up there, when I caught them up there, they didn't fight at all. Oh really? You would hook them and it was just drag them to the boat. They give you a good couple of pulls at the boat, you know, in protest, and then you net them and you're done. Um, the water up there would be 75 degrees or warmer. The water here, 63. Oh, wow, okay. Which is like the very top end of their Pretty favorite. Pretty drastic Yeah, this is the top difference. end of their favorite water temperatures. Okay. About 50 
the 63, 65 is, a, is it. Oh, you just hear a fish jump? Yeah, you'll see some fish jumping around. First fish on. <laughs> Don't know what it is. Oh. This is still there? Yeah, it is. And squawfish. Squawfish, of course. That's why I stopped fighting. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, right. they, they fight very differently. A smallmouth, you pretty oh, much, yeah. they're very active. A lot of head shaking and everything else. Yeah. The walleye, they'll kind of throw you for a loop. You either get a lot of weight with no head shakes, or you get a really active fighter. And then your squawfish will <laughs> about freaking uh -oh. you know, shock the daylights out of you <laughs> and then stop fighting half by, or 20, uh, yeah. five seconds in. And then I'll have you give it two good rod length pulls, and I'm going to do a third to kind of keep us a little bit apart. Okay. When you said these are shad wraps? These are Apollo shad wraps. Gotcha. Probably, if I had to say, the most productive lure I've ever fished for smallmouth. Oh, this, really? This would be it. We do really well on smallmouth with them when we want to. And I have done really well on the walleye with them. Uh, the first four or five big walleye we caught in the lookout were on shad wraps. Oh, cool. So, and then we got into flicker minnows. We did really well with the flicker minnows. I went with those because they have like the little BB rattles in them. Yeah. So if you notice, they actually have a good rattle to them. And so I never really looked back at the shad wraps. When we started fishing this, the first trip, I noticed I could not get them to bite any of the bigger stuff that we were doing. So we started looking for small ideas to go back to. And this was one of the first things that we decided to go back to. Makes sense. So on the first day that we had these out here, we got four in two hours. So now the last trip, we hooked a couple, lost Two, we lost two of them right at the boat, lost one on the way in. We almost know for a fact it was a walleye is, is the way I look at it. Um, Just because of the way it was fighting. Yeah, the way it was fighting. And uh, so we, you know, that's what I say. We didn't land any of that trip, and that was my only skunk trip. We even came out here in a gnarly rainstorm. The, the last, not the not last night, but like a couple of weeks ago when it rained, we were oh, out yeah, here in yeah. that. And uh, I think that was the first day we fished the shad wraps, and we did really well. So we're gonna speed this up since this current's kind of not really there. Oh yeah, there we go. I feel it thumping. So we're in 10 feet of water. Yeah, I usually catch quite a few out of here. A lot. Oh yeah? Yeah, we come out for a couple hour trips. We usually catch a dozen small up in a couple hours. Oh wow, that's cool. So. Sometimes it can be so good for the smallmouth, and the size on them in here is really decent size most of the time. So you kind of wonder how you catch walleye because you're constantly on a smallmouth. Oh. You should be coming where you're going to start feeling some rocks. That yeah, I think I just did. Tickle on the bottom. And that's good because that's what you want is to be around that structure. Yeah, I'm hitting structure for sure. I can feel it. Yeah, these things move a ton, the, the fish. So you're constantly just looking for different lanes, trying to figure out how to put it in front of one of them. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, fish on. Got a bass. <laughs> That's the other way you know it's a bass. They a lot of times they, <laughs> they jump run right away. Yeah. And most of the bass we get from about 20 feet below that stick up to the deadline. Smally! Yeah, that's a little guy too. That's that's a little a guy. A little half pounder? Yeah, I don't even know if he's there, but they... Oh yeah, look like at that. get in here are chunks. <clears throat> I haven't gotten a, a big one out of here, but I haven't fished this enough yet i don't think so but i think the biggest one we've gotten out of here has been about three pounds yeah you know, oh sure. look at that little guy i'm sure there's bigger he's ones. so cute <laughs> later buddy <laughs> dang 
He was all over that. Shown, fish shown. Oh, it's a squawfish. It's got to be. It fought for a second and then it stopped. Very possible. Yeah, it's not even doing anything. It's probably another squaw. Come on, walk the dog. Just smacked it real hard though, right off the, right yeah, off they, the bat. Yep. Squawfish. They, they do that. They smack the living daylights out of it. It's very exciting for the bite. <laughs> yeah, for the bite. <laughs> but they, they also miss it a lot of times. Yeah, that one's a little bigger. Yep. That's Looks like it's got exactly chomped what, on. That's probably exactly what I missed up there on that one. <laughs> very possible. Because I mean, it was a. They thumped the daylights out of it. They fast. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you get a little smally? Yeah. Hey, it looks like it might be a little bigger than mine. No. Oh no, it's like this, it's like a twin. It's like a twin. <laughs> they get a lot bigger in here, I swear. Well, you did say that we should find some smallies in here. You were right. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't even consider these what I was talking about. Okay, okay. you're talking Maybe. some some bigger ones, eh? Oh yeah, this is, oh, these yeah. are small. Usually the average size for what we get in here Usually pretty dang good. I wouldn't mind a nice little three pound, four pound smallie. That'd be nice. Back forward again. I really do like this rock stuff that's up here for casting around. We'll spend a little more time before we boogie on out past that. Got one? Yeah. That one hit like right after I dropped it in. Fighting like a smallmouth? I don't know. It feels weird. Is it even a fish? I think it is. Yeah, What's it's a fish? fish. It's for sure a fish. Oh, yeah, there's a smallie. That's about what they're normally like. A liking. decent one. He <laughs> hit that like right after it went in the water. Yeah. It didn't even get to the bottom and he had it in his mouth. Those are about the average size there. See, look at this thing. Look at this little six foot two. Woo! Getting bent. Yeah, that's a nicer one. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna let you go. Don't break my line, please, because. Oh, okay. Sweet. Smally. Let's go. All right, later, buddy. Yeah, I haven't caught any huge ones in here yet. But that's about what they usually average. About yeah. like that. He liked it, though. They're nice. I guess that change up of color helped out, huh? I was fishing that other color, and it wasn't doing anything. I switched to this and started getting hits right away. Can't complain about that. If they're, they were in the lake up there, up to three, four, five pounds... Got yeah. some in here like that too. Yeah, I like casted right off of those rocks over there. And it like didn't even get time to go to the bottom. Like right in there. Didn't even have time to sink. Good. And these fish on. I will hang out right around these rocks. Come through. So, a couple of And you changed fish. up your lure again too, right? I put on a little different color shad wrap. Kind of the rule of thumb is if you're throwing something and the smallmouth aren't even touching it, try something different. Good structure around here for the fish. Oh, it's beautiful up here. Perfect. This is barely buried. the best bin this rod's had in it in a little while last time i took it fishing it was for stock trout oh really yeah yeah some of the small mouth that we've caught in that upper lake is mind-blowing in size not quite the same as it was 
I bet you there's some smallies sitting right in the mouth of that oh, they're all junction. Over here. So the morning dawn robo worm. Nice. And who makes that one? Uh, robo worm. Robo worm. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. They're one of my favorites for like finesse plastics. Like that's why I have literally a whole tray, like just literally dedicated to my robo worm plastics. Nice. Uh, and the rest I have like this whole pocket here. I have a whole bunch of plastics of all different kinds let's see right off the point Yeah, I had this rod made, what, like two years ago, I think. Okay. Uh, by Ter Terry's Custom Rods up in Hillsboro. Oh, okay. He's a really cool guy. He mostly does fly rods. Fish? No. Oh. He mostly does Except fly rods. Something right off that rock or whatever it was. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he, he does these little nice, like, single feather wraps like this oh right on and i really liked that and i was like that's nice and then i don't know if you've heard of raptor rods i have yeah yeah so the, he's kind of known for doing this whole like feather wrap around the blank thing and so i talked to terry and i was like could you do that wrap on the back side like this and then do another wrap around the blank you see all these blocks and stuff right in here yeah anywhere you can get in around that especially off the head of it But yeah, he did a really great job for my first ever rod, and like he was super patient with working with me. And that's what you got because I had I changed the blank. Like I wanted, he was gonna have me do a different one at first, and I was like unsure of it. Oh, oh, getting hit. Oh, look at my line. There's one. Here we go. Oh, that squawfish! Damn it! I was getting hit over there too. That one acted just like. Oh, it's a first. bigger one though. Yeah. A little oh, bit well. bigger. Oh. That one actually acted a lot more like what I wanted to see. I was getting hit over here, and I saw my line start moving to the side, and I tried to set the hook, and it was like, nope. Seems like the bite's picking up, yeah. maybe. Or maybe we're just on the wrong side this whole time. <laughs> nah, because you started over here. It just back and forth until they come up looking for a meal. We came right out of that middle of that patch of rocks, too. Yeah, he he was a lot more of what I was looking for. I got a little more excited than I thought we should be. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Another little fish on. They are on a vengeance today. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a smallie. Oh, it is. The way hey. he came up, he looked like he was furling. I mean, it, it makes sense. He didn't stop st fighting right away, so. There you go. There's one right there. You got one, too. Hey, oh, no, wait, wait what is that? Is that a trout? That is a, that is a trout. That's a trout. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is a salmon. Is it? Yeah, I think. Oh, um, yeah. I think it. Oh, wait. No. No. It's a trout. It's some sort of a trout. Yeah, it's got a white mouth. Double. Two different species back to back. Look at that. You got a smallie and a trout. Oh. oh. There you go. That's back funny. Like right from the same pretty much area too. Now we need the ones that try to eat that thing. Yeah, we need the walleyes. 
That's funny. Oh. Yeah. That might be a swap. Seems like a good one if it's a squawfish. I think we got a walleye. First walleye of the day? Oh. I'll, I'll try to reel this in real quick. It's not fighting like a squawfish. I'm pretty sure it's what it is. Oh, look at that. A big one, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a bigger one for sure. I mean, at least the big ones fight good, though. Yeah, that acted a lot more like a walleye coming down down current. Look at that freaking toad! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Wow, that's. I mean, you definitely got the biggest squawfish of the day for sure. <laughs> Be there for a minute too <laughs> yeah yeah it seemed like the thing was fighting good oh, wow that's a chonker it's got it's super gold like the coloring on it it's not as silver it's cool nice still getting action <laughs> Just not the target species. Not the target species. Nope, that's not good. Oh. It looks awesome. Looking over the lake, though. Uh, we'll, leave up. we'll go back to the other side and give her another run over there. All right. Yeah, a couple of something hit over there. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing, dude? Now what is that? That's not a nutria. It looks it? like a river otter. Is that a river otter in a fucking lake? Yeah, I don't know. That's what it looked like. I mean, I've seen nutria, but nutrias look like rats. Yeah. That doesn't look like a rat. He's checking us out though. He's still popping his head up over there. Yeah, that's what I saw. I saw one of those things all the way up by the sign. That's when I was like, what in the world is that? They're looking for food too. Rob's got another one on. Probably another squawfish, but we'll find out in a minute. Those suckers sure have been active today. Yep, look at that, just water skiing them in. Gotta get them back off and on the way. He just gave up halfway through and just, yep. Squawfish. Is it a squawfish or is it small? So. I think it might be a small mouth. He grabbed you it. You like barely got over. that thing in there. That's a squaw. Yeah, yep. I cast it, I let it sit there. <laughs> yeah, it was barely in the water. Damn. I looked over to go adjust the trolling motor and grabbed it and ran. It's a good thing I got that new battery in. <laughs> so you can get another squawfish? Get another squawfish on camera. I'm gonna it's call this, I'm gonna call this the squawfish beatdown video. This uh, is almost getting embarrassing. <laughs> Probably would've been better just checking spinners. <laughs> squawfish like those too. They do. Squawfish number 3,284 for the day. Keep digging on that thing.
Yeah. Look at that. Those suckers just eat anything. There's so many of them in here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I should just tell people that when they ask me, like, how to catch fish for the first time, just be like, go. Go to, to the, Dexter Lake. Go to Dexter. Or go, go, go to the Willamette River and just, like, throw anything you want in the water. <laughs> You'll catch squawfish. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I've caught them on like jerk baits. I've caught them on lipless crank baits. I've caught them on sand shrimp, sand eggs. I, well, I've spinners. caught them on eggs or uh, worms and chicken liver a lot. Really? Yeah. Fish that I felt just got off mine and went to yours. Very possible. I don't know. I felt a hit, and then right after you got hit. <laughs> Boat flipping squawfish for days. You can't do that with a walleye unless he's a really small one. Will boat flip them? Yeah, it will just yard them in like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, they, they will put their, their weight behind them and, and so, so to speak, put their foot down, I guess you could say. All right. So we're going to do our last troll down. Last troll down, get the big motor going, and then we put... Boogie on out of here. All right, let's see if we can get one walleye on the way out. guys we are getting headed out here it was awesome meeting up with rob today and getting out and fishing we didn't get a catch the target species which was walleye but still had a great time uh we got the trout smallmouth bass and squawfish today so that was pretty sweet um but we'll get out here again we'll try for walleye and hopefully we'll be able to make it happen next time but we'll see you guys next time on another oregon fishing adventure peace